Jackie Robinson and I'm giving a presentation on the legality of young life in high school lunchrooms. Young life is a ministry which pursues adolescents which would never go to church. The idea is to show these kids that a relationship with Jesus is actually fun and exhilarating rather than boring and a whole set of rules. Young Life was founded in 1938 by Jim Rayburn when he came up with the challenge to invite kids who would never ever want to go to church to know Jesus. It, the first club was in 1941 in Texas and it was called the Young Life Campaign. At this club there were 800 students and adults. And by the late 1940s, volunteer leadership began at Newton College. And then 1953, it went international with France. Ever since then, the Young Life movement has been spreading across the world. Today, there are over 19,000 volunteer leaders and over 700 multicultural ministries. It reaches over 18,000 inner city kids, middle school kids through wildlife, kids with special needs through Capernaum, rural areas through Young Life Small Town, pregnant teens and their children do young, young lives, and even college students do Young Life College. This picture is from Young Life Expeditions, which, which took place in Ethiopia, and is part of their international ministry. Young Life has a lot of different dynamics, and it is super important to understand the way it works and the goal of the leaders in order to understand why it's not illegal for them to come to high school lunchrooms. The idea is for leaders to go where the kids are. This makes them the vulnerable ones and, makes it, and gives kids the impression that they really do care and love them because they're going out of their comfort zones just to meet and know these kids. It is part of the idea to earn the right to be heard. Young Life and its leaders and its staff members believe in Letting, like opening up to kids and letting them trust them before they tell them about Jesus so that when it comes to them, it's coming from an authentic source where they know that what they're telling them is true and that they care about them and that they mean more to them than any agenda, that there is no agenda. And that is called contact work. Contact work takes place in high school games, high school lunchrooms, going out to eat at Sonic after club, and just hanging out, spending time, and building friendships. Club happens once a week and is advertised as the greatest week, or the greatest hour of your week. It's pretty much a giant party that leads to Jesus. It starts off really fast paced and really exciting, bunch of dancing and singing and acting really silly and weird games and just having a lot of fun. And slowly centers in until the talk at the very end, which is just an eight to 10 minute speech telling kids about this Jesus guy and what he did for them and how much he loves them. And leaders often try to be an example of that love. Camp is the greatest week of your life. There really aren't words to describe camp. It's like seriously the greatest thing you're ever gonna do. You vlog, you go on slides, you have Hoedowns and water Olympics and zip lines to go into the lake and mountain biking and ropes courses and hiking and horses and so many really awesome, really crazy things that is seriously just the best thing ever and I can't even put it into words. But this is a time where you can, kids really intensely get to hear about the gospel and be invited just to know more and learn more and accept the invitation that Jesus has given them to follow him. Um, if a kid or any kids are like, you know what, this Jesus thing sounds pretty cool, I want to do it, there is a thing called campaigners. And campaigners is kind of like a small group and it's just a more personal, more intense time for students and leaders to get together and talk about Jesus and jump into the Bible and figure out what this whole becoming a Christian and Christianity is all about. It's where leaders encourage kids in their faith, encourage them to grow, push them to grow. They do community service projects if they want. They, they constantly just encourage each other and uplift each other and push each other towards Jesus. It's super awesome and it's super fun. The committee is something that is often forgotten in the dynamics of young life, but it is really important because these are the people that make it all happen. These are the adults of the community, 
who want positive influences in their high school kids' lives. It is parents, young life alumni, um, ministers, people, just people who know the ministry and see what it's doing and like, we want this for our kids, our community, we want to help build it up. And they support Young Life financially, administratively, prayerfully. Um, they're so great to the leaders and to the kids. And they often go unappreciated because you know, the high school kids don't they know they exist. Personally, Young Life began in 2008 with Matt Richardson as the area director. The very first club had only 15 students. In 2010, the first club had 100 students. So it's obvious that the movement is just getting really big and everyone's excited about it. Um, weekend camp in 2008, they took six kids to Windy Gap. And then in 2010, they took 70. So it is, it's growing and they're going to summer camps now. And it is just awesome to watch it grow and be a part of it. Um, but in the 2012-2013 school year, at Tennessee High School, the leaders were no longer allowed to visit the lunchroom. This is super confusing because under the exact same administration, we were allowed to, they were allowed to be lost here. And it is just sad and confusing because the high school lunchroom is the most important place to meet kids. Because there are always going to be those kids that don't go to the basketball games, don't go to the football games, ride the bus, kids that there's just no way of meeting them except for in the lunchroom. And it's so important because those kids that don't want to go out and don't have very many friends to hang out with them are the kids that we want to be like, dude, we love you, so hang out with us. And you can't do that if you're not there. And so it's just become a really big struggle. And, you know, they're worried about legal implications. And it's just confusing and hard. It's so vitally important to the ministry that we can be in the lunchroom. Church versus state laws are obviously a big issue in this, but it's actually really undereducated and under, not under, it's educated is the right word. Um, people don't really know, they just know that like, the First Amendment protects religion, but really if the idea is that when it was written that Americans could freely practice what they believed in public and without the worrying of anyone else. And when it comes to religion in schools, only the administrative staff and teachers are not permitted to promote religious beliefs. It means they can't wear, like, I pray stickers or lead prayers in class or insert their beliefs, whatever religion it is. And the thing is, most laws have now been made for those who are against religion. They don't want to offend those people. So they're leaving all of them who have any kind of religion out. And that's not really fair at all. Um, then there are just very religion in school controversies why they say, no, we can't do this. And it's because some students feel left out with there are religious leaders and ministries coming in and only hanging out towards the kids that they already know or towards the Christians. And they're like, oh, you, you don't know a Christian, you can't hang out with us. Um, or that some people will look down on them for not having religious beliefs. But if you just reflect back to the whole dynamics of young life and the idea, like, they're never going to single anyone out. They want to know those kids. They don't care what religion you are. They're going to love you anyways. Even if you're like, hmm, still no. They're going to be like, all right, we're going to hang out. Like, they don't care. And that this really beautiful part of the ministry and why, again, it doesn't break any laws because they're not doing anything that the laws go against. And so that is that. It's just a really good ministry that should be allowed to be in school lunches because no laws are being broken and it's getting hurt. Everyone's happy and having fun with it.